Okay, if I have a fraction, so for example, let's assume that I have fx is equal to 1 over x. That is my fraction. A fraction cannot be 0. And I mean, it cannot be 0 if the numerator is not 0. It doesn't matter what denominator I use, it can never be 0. Uh, assume it like that. Uh, assume it's my birthday and I have a cake and I share it with you. Okay, so we share it in half. Okay, then I have one cake divided by two. In other words, my x was two. Okay, now each one of us gets a half. If both of us bring our halves together, we must have the whole. Okay, now what's going to happen if we have more friends? Let's say I, invi I invited you and two other friends, so we four people, I divided in four. Now each one of us are, are going to get a smaller piece than if it's just two. So when I divide with four, I'm going to get a smaller piece. Okay, each piece is now smaller. But when all four of us bring our pieces back together, I still have the whole. Now let's go further. Let's say I invited more friends, four more friends actually, and now I'm dividing it into eight pieces. Now as you can see, the eighth piece or the eight pieces are now each one smaller because I, I had one cake and I divided. And so it happens that, let's say I invited every person in the world to my party. Okay? You are going to get a crumb, if so much. Okay? If I divide that whole cake with every person in the world, it, you might get probably nothing. You might not be able to see it, but it is not nothing. It's not zero because when everyone brings what they got, together again, I must have my whole cake. And if everyone got nothing, nothing times 7 billion is still nothing. So in other words, you won't get nothing. You will never have a fraction equal to zero unless what I divided can be equal to zero. I didn't divide nothing, I divided a cake. So in that case, a fraction, no matter what the denominator is, it can even be a negative number, it doesn't matter. That fraction can never be zero. Well, let me do it like this. We know that a fraction, and what's the fraction? The fraction is 1 over x. 1 over x cannot be zero. It's impossible. No matter what I use for x, I can never get zero. x may not be zero, and 1 over x cannot be equal to zero. If that's the case, then I know that this is my y value. That's how I get y, by using this this formula I get a y so y will never be able to be equal to zero so I can write this let's write it in um, a set notation so y can be an element of any real number so y is an element of any real number given that y is not equal to zero Okay, well, let's, uh, let's look at another example, a different example this time. If x is equal to, uh, let's say, 2 over x minus 1. Yeah, just like that. Okay, that is my function. Now, remember what we said, that the fraction cannot be equal to 0. Let's make that a negative. A fraction cannot be equal to zero. Now, this is the fraction. In other words, I know the fraction, that is the fraction, may not equal zero. But that is the fraction I used to get y. In other words, y may not be equal to zero. So it's exactly the same as the one we, we just did right there. It's exactly the same as that. So I'm not going to waste more time writing it differently. If I had fx is equal to negative 3 over x plus 7 minus 2, or oh, x plus, no, it doesn't matter. Okay, there's an, another example. Okay, remember what we said, the fraction may not, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to get the range, the fraction cannot be 0. So this is my output, uh, my output. I want to know what can I get out. Well, one thing that I know is this part of my output cannot be zero. Okay, so my output cannot be zero minus two. 
It's impossible. In other words, my y value cannot equal negative 2. It's impossible. Why? Because this part of my output, the fraction part, cannot be 0. So my answer can never be 0 minus 2. Never, because that, that 0 can never exist. It will always be something minus 2. And therefore my output can never be 0 minus 2 or just negative 2. Another way I could have done it is I could have just said, okay, well, I know that negative 3 over x plus 3. That cannot equal 0. But that is not my function. My function is negative 3 over x plus 3 minus 2. Okay, that's my function. And that cannot be equal to... Now, look what I did. I subtracted a 2 on the left side to get that. So I'm going to subtract a 2 on the right side as well. So this cannot be. Okay? And this part is my y value, my output value. y cannot be equal to negative 2. Let's write that in bracket notation. So I can say, well, y is an element of... So in bracket notation, we have negative 2 here. Okay? It cannot be equal to negative 2. It can be smaller and it can be larger. So I can go from negative infinity all the way to negative 2, but I'm not allowed to equal negative 2. I have to unite that with the top part, so I unite it, that's the unite sign, with the numbers from negative 2 upwards. In other words, not equal to, in other words, I don't use block letters, negative 2 all the way to positive infinity. That's another way of writing the range.